Today I've got another Citrix item. Uh, this is the Access Gateway. Uh, this particular model is the AG2010. It's a little different from the other ones. Uh, this one, uh, you can tell it's got a reversed motherboard in it by the fact that it's got PS2 ports peeking through the uh, grill here. Serial port to Ethernet. And everything else is covered. Obviously there's um, video or something right here. Uh, if this particular board has it. And uh, we've got some LEDs for um, network activity and hard drives. Around back we've just got the little information plate. A little tucked away USB port. Big air inlet. You, can, um, you might be able to see through the grill. There's three uh, 40 millimeter fans there. And uh, one new power supply. On the inside this is quite a bit different than the usual uh, Citrix products I've opened up. Uh, this one has a, a super micro motherboard like usual, but it's a proprietary design. This is not an ATX board or an ITX, anything like that. This is a weird ass, like rectangular, long, narrow rectangle board that Super Micro makes. Obviously, it can fit in this case, which is a rebadged Super Micro case. Uh, we've got. Um, parallel ATA hard drive which is a little annoying I believe it's yeah 80 gig connection to the front panel nicely uh, wire tied simple Ablecom 260 280 watt power supply and oh no sorry it's a 330 watt power supply and uh, yeah there's space for Ethernet cards or whatever they're PCI Express slots and we've got a big shrouded section, which just pops off apparently. And wow, five of these double, f oh, <laughs> well, okay then. I thought it was five of them, it's only three. Uh, these double fan units, <laughs> they've even uh, disconnected the tachometer on this line. Uh, these are um, kind of common in, in larger uh, rack units where they have um, two sets of fans and I'm not sure how this works with efficiency like if if you really do get double the airflow or if it's simply a redundancy thing so it can run both of them at a slower speed or something but yeah they've obviously disconnected the tachometer on this one I wonder if they did that on these two nope this one's connected as is this one and there's these little mounting pegs that are falling out everywhere they're rubberized which is nice to um, help dampen the sound a bit but I uh, I think this thing's pretty loud I haven't turned this on in a really really long time I got this quite a while ago as you can see it's practically brand new I mean there's no dust in it whatsoever I removed the three screws that are just holding on the face plate so we can see the actual motherboard and yep that's a video connector there's also two front USB connections and we've got uh, the two access panels for the PCI Express slots. Now it's a little weird that they're using this custom board. Uh, a lot of times you'll get a regular ATX board and they still use the same riser arrangement but it just puts the card over the motherboard which isn't a really big deal. So I'm not really sure why they did that on this. Uh, I know Supermicro makes tons of proprietary boards. They make blades and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, we'll get this spun around. I'll hook it up and we'll see uh, if there's anything on the drive. I don't think there is. I think I checked this drive and I think it was blank. Okay, so the uh, fan power management has kicked in and it's made it a little quieter. And I do remember that this thing had a uh, a BIOS password. I have no idea what it is. And the thing I've noticed with Citrix boards is that resetting the CMOS doesn't actually clear the password, even as directed by Supermicro in their own manuals. It still doesn't get rid of it. So what I have found is that if you update the BIOS, you figure out what board it is, and you update the BIOS with a normal like retail BIOS, it wipes the uh, the Citrix thing. So I'm just going to restart and let it boot up normally. Uh, this particular one is a Pentium 4 800 megahertz front side bus as you can see there. 
3.4 gigahertz, probably why the fans are so damn loud. Loading uh, Lilo. So it does have something on it. I took out the little riser and it's a kind of unique one. I guess they do use a different one for this particular model. There is actually another PCI Express connector on it and it uses a staggered uh, arrangement to hook them up which is a little odd. There's also the USB connection that runs to the front, uh, sorry, the back of the machine and, uh, and you know they got the nice little sticky uh, wire tie holders even though these things suck they do fall apart but at least I put the effort into putting those in and yeah I just connected the ATA cable and I'm gonna take everything out and we'll take a look at it because I'm gonna put the case out for recycling. I got everything out of the case, wasn't too hard you know, just a few dozen screws. Uh, this is the hard drive caddy. Metal, actually quite stiff. Uh, one little nice attention to detail are these little tabs here. So when you put the hard drive in, which is a snug fit, it keeps it a nice distance off the base of it. So you get a nice airflow top and bottom. Nice little attention to detail. A lot of these don't have that. And it sits fat, flat on the metal, which, you know, isn't terrible. It does conduct heat away from it. But it is nice to see airflow around the whole thing. And, yeah, very, very, very strong hard drive caddy. It's actually stronger than the case, I think. The hard drive itself is just a 7200 RPM Seagate Barracuda drive. I don't know if the drive's damaged or not. I haven't tried it out. That might be why it's not booting up. Alright, I've got the motherboard out. This is a Supermicro PDS-MU. Uh, it's also got dash CS045, but Supermicro just generally uses the first little bit, and the, the last uh, section is uh, the options. So you'll get ones that will have two network ports, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so we've got two sticks of one half gig of, uh, this is DDR2 memory, I believe, and we've got a uh, Pentium 4 here. This is the Pentium 4 651. It's only an 800 megahertz front side bus. It's 64 bit. It's got um, hyper threading, so it shows up as two cores, even though it's one physical core. And yeah, it's not very good. I mean, the thing's uh, 86 watts, which is insane. Uh, Pentium 4s use a lot of power and they're not very good compared to the core series. Uh, unless of course you're talking about a modern Pentium which is really based on the core series. But yeah, this isn't very good and I will probably pop this board on eBay even though I doubt anyone's going to buy it because of this custom motherboard form factor. So let's just get that back on here. On the motherboard we've got uh, serial ATA, we've got the PCI Express interfaces, Intel Ethernet controllers, uh, basic ATI GPU to handle the VGA output. We've got a so dim light, well, it looks like a mini PCI slot that holds the management controller card, which isn't installed on this particular model. And we've got the usual assortments of super micro ports, such as serial and uh, parallel ATA or sorry, uh, parallel ATAs up here, and this is the uh, floppy drive connector. Uh, this particular motherboard uses a mix of solid caps and regular electrolytics, and all the electrolytics are in good shape. Uh, but, yeah, it's not very useful due to the weird-ass form factor. As you can see, they put both power connectors right next to each other, which is actually not a terrible idea, although it is kind of difficult to get the wiring in. And along this end, We've got just some basic stuff like the CMOS battery and whatnot. I've got some extra memory here. I, I think this is ECC memory, so this may not work because I don't think this is ECC memory. It doesn't look like it, but I'll give it a shot. So I'm going to pop on the nice heatsink, which is a heavy-duty copper heatsink, quite beautiful actually, and uh, put some thermal paste back on that, and I'll get it hooked up to try out the uh, the BIOS flash. 
I've got it running now. I just have a PS2 keyboard hooked up and a little 60 millimeter fan just to keep it from catching on fire for now. Uh, it's not going to do very much, but yeah, it seems okay for now. And I've got a USB flash drive hooked up with DOS on it. And we're at the DOS prompt. So all I did was go to the directory and you run a little batch file and it you tell it what ROM file to uh, copy to the system and you just sit here and wait for it to do it. This is actually a nicer flash program. The other ones I've used from Supermicro aren't quite as nice or DOS based. It might be the AMI based BIOSes use a different, like just a plain DOS one, whereas this is a Phoenix BIOS, so it does look very fancy and high tech. Look at progress bars. Okay, successfully programmed. Let's see if we can enter the BIOS. Might have missed it. Yep, default configuration. There we go. One cleared BIOS. So normally what you do is go to set up defaults. Yep. And I don't think I need to really change anything on here. Seize the one gig of RAM. That's good. Oh, well, there we have it. One cleared out BIOS in a normal PC. Uh, aside from the stupid form factor. So, like I said, I'm going to try and sell the motherboard. I don't think anyone's going to buy it. I'll probably just have to scrap it. This purchase wasn't too great since like I said, it's a custom board. This power supply is loud, by the way. I'm going to unplug the system, actually. Oh, yeah. Very loud. So, yeah, not a great buy since it's a custom motherboard. And, you know, it's an older system with Pentium 4, which is useless. So, uh, there are a couple other things in here. These are the... Um, Nidic? Nidic? Nidic Ultra Flow fans. And there's two on each one. And if you see, they're actually joined together and you can push them apart on an angle. I think. Hmm, how does this work? The other ones came apart. Okay, I think they go. It's a trick! Oh well, it's not too important. They separate. Big deal. Um, and there's also these dummy modules that sit in it. Obviously the case is designed for two processor motherboard and they just put these dummies in, uh, you know, in, in case you upgrade, I guess. I don't know if they actually offered an upgrade for it. I'm sure Supermicro does, but Citrix never wants anyone to know that their computers are just regular systems. It's not some fancy magical network processing engine. So, yeah, they're just regular computers. The case is designed for two uh, dual processor systems, and they aren't using one. These fans, I think, are particularly loud, even without the ridiculously loud um, power supply fan. So, yeah, I'm just going to take this apart, and that's it. Oh, and uh, actually, I forgot one more thing. This is the uh, little module that holds all the fans in. Isn't it cute? They come with little rubber bumpers that have fallen off and they they just sit in here and this whole thing just sits on rubber rubber bumpers as well. So none of this is actually attached. The idea is that this can vibrate, this can vibrate, and not vibrate the whole case. And as you can see, there's a little, little dummy module that, that sits in there, see? Yeah, eh, kind of convoluted, but it works.